Science and Antique Period College at New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the overheads back in cruise mass. Uh, we're back doing our overnight program, which has the kids sleeping in the broken space below the cruise masses and spending a lot of their time up here on the mass decks. Uh, and while we're waiting for kids to get up the ladders and whatnot so we can start the programs, so I've found myself doing a lot of this, just like, come on, let's go, and just staring at the overheads. And uh, it got me thinking, down here on the mess decks, the, uh, we are at the turret three. So the armored deck has stopped way back there. Uh, so, so this deck up here is pretty thin. It's uh, probably a half inch or less overhead. And yet, look at the size of this framing here. These, these eye beams holding the ceiling up are over a foot thick, and that's ridiculously large given that they're not supporting any weight over that. We're not so far aft that we've got the helo pad overhead and like aircraft or a ship's boats sitting on it. And we're not so far forward that we've got 16 inch guns with a superstructure mounted on it. So, why on earth do we have all of these support structures here getting in the way of the tables and all of this thick framing for very thin plate? And uh, looking up at it, I am reminded that uh, oftentimes in pictures when they're doing underwear replenishment, we see pallets of shells on the fan tail. So my thought is that uh, these decks back here were intentionally reinforced, even though they were coming from time to sit on them. There, there wasn't a 40 millimeter gun position here or anything like that specifically so that you could move those one ton shells around uh, the deck for their load. You can put them all on board, stage them up there, and then as throughout the day, you're lowering them down or coming into port, bringing them up preparatory to offloading that port. Um, they're sitting on the deck up there. So that's my call on that. Some other cool features that we see looking up at the overhead Right here above me, notice there are three plates that come together with this riveted seam. Uh, and they come together just like a cardboard box uh, with, when you fold it on top of each other. I've been told, like from looking at the blueprints, that oftentimes there are places where the, where the various plates are coming together in sections like that. Uh, but this is Probably the first time I've seen one of those folds. If you look just past that where this uh, gusset plate is, look at how this ivy sort of curves around that plate where it gets uh, riveted together. It's a really interesting design feature that you sometimes get on old riveted ships like this, but you don't get on welded ships where the plates are just butted up against each other and welded together. Final interesting thing to look at in the overhead here is around this ladder well. If you look up, you see that there is a well mark all the way around. And here, you can even see some of the plate that's left over where they cut this away. These ladder wells were light lockers when the ship was built. And so there was a, an enclosure all the way around with a regular joiner door, possibly a cart during World War II right here so that uh, if you've got the hatch open and you've got the lights down here on the mess deck you're not letting that light out in a combat zone where people can see you. It seems to indicate that even though the ship still used its light lockers in the 1980s at some point near the end the ship's career they cut all this away. Uh, it's possible they did that to load all of the cargo uh, that was put down here as part of the ball falling process, or even to be able to get the dehumidification equipment down here. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure at what point during the ship's career uh, that that happened. And honestly, I don't remember from my visits of the other Iowa's if they still have light lockers around their ladders that open to the exterior or not. Um, now, New Jersey does not have any of her ladders closed anymore like this. I'm 
fairly certain I've seen pictures of Iowa where herds are open. Uh, and I can't remember Wisconsin and Missouri, but I'll hope to visit them again soon. If any of you guys have visited recently, find me uh, the best deck cloud or show up to the main deck and see if they're enclosed in light lockers and let me know. Also, the ones in the birthing compartments of forward would be similar. Anyway, that's just some cool features I've been looking at in the overhead. Iowa class battleships really are over engineered. They have way more structural strength uh, than I think they need. Um, and, and sure, sometimes they're moving heavy stuff around up here. But even so, it seems like all of this framing and all of these support columns around here are way more significant than, uh, than you would need. And yet, they built the ship to be able to withstand all that weight and probably even weights that they hadn't even accounted for. The ship did have extremely long lives because of their reserve buoyancy and their ability to be modified over the years. There was always room to put on more stuff. And the, the strong bones of the ship, the structure that's able to support more on top of it, surely played a role in this. Now, what are some other places where you think the ship is over-engineered? Let us know in the comment section down below if you can think of anything that fits that bill. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to help the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the channel. Thanks for watching.